Hi, everyone. So happy to be back. I have had such a zen day today. I mean, I had my nine to five, but I had a one of the YouTube like fall ambiance um, videos on in the background. And this one was such a vibe. It was like visuals from, you know, forest, just basically all fall like visuals mixed with jazz music in the background so it was a great thing to have on in the background while I was working it kept me like focused and chill and zen that was great my best friend also was visiting by the time this comes out she will have gone back to New York but she came to visit for a week because we attended this event together which I will give a recap on and share some great takeaways in a minute um but it's just been a great day also started watching insecure if you're not familiar it is created by Issa ray it's on hbo max marco actually discovered it which is why i started re-watching it but it is a great rewatch because when i first watched the show i think i was in my my early to mid 20s that feels like a lifetime ago at this point it isn't a lifetime ago because it's like five, you know, I just turned 30 this year. So not that long, but just thinking about how much my life has changed in the past year and, you know, even like two, two to three years, it feels like I'm watching this show for the first time, which is exciting because, you know, I've grown since I first watched it. So rewatching it, is interesting because I feel like I have different perspectives or I'm just watching it with different eyes to an extent. That's a good thing because, you know, as we grow, we gain new perspectives. And I feel like when we rewatch things that we have watched previously, or at least in my perspective, I see like pick up on different things that I maybe didn't pick up, pick up on the first time I watched it and I find that exciting and fun and I love watching shows that also like as I grow I still have things that I take away from it you know the last time I watched Insecure I was very single <laughs> living in New York dating living my best life I still am but you know living my best single life and very focused on me and my career and hadn't really tapped into my creativity that much or discovered my passion but fast forward and I am now living in California I am in a you know committed relationship and I have discovered my passion and am tapping into my creativity on a weekly basis and feel like I'm thriving and I feel like I'm really coming into my own and I am embracing being me and I'm trying to do that unapologetically. Obviously, you know, I'm still practicing empathy every day and patience and kindness, but I am not holding back anymore. And that's something that over the course of my life at times, I feel like I've had to do. Sometimes it's because I want to do avoid conflict um, because I do have a direct, <laughs> direct and honest and blunt personality to an extent. Um, I am kind and I don't just share opinions, you know, to bring people down or to be malicious. I try to always be honest. That's my default. And sometimes, you know, it is a good thing and it can be perceived as maybe a not so good thing, but it always comes from a good place. That's my long-winded way of saying I have not always embraced being myself as much as I have over the past couple of years, especially as I've continued my manifesting journey. I've come to this realization that I can only control me and I can't control others. And that means I can't control how people react to me. And that doesn't mean I have a free pass to say whatever I think and act however I want and, you know, be like a jerk to people. But it does mean that I get to say what I think and I try to be as intentional as I can be. And, you know, there's appropriate or not appropriate times and places to say things and 
that's, you know, that's a given, but I get to be me. And if somebody doesn't understand that or doesn't vibe with it or, you know, challenges that, that's okay. I can't control how they're going to react to me, but I can control how I act and, you know, how I carry myself and what my intentions are. People are always going to have their own reaction to how you converse with them or engage with them. But something that I think needs to be normalized and talked about more is the fact that we can't control how people take in what we're saying, especially for those of you that might resonate with me of being someone that says what they feel or think and is honest and also just like wants to genuinely be helpful. Don't cut yourself down if people don't understand, you know, where you're coming from. Because I've been in that position before where I've kind of just held myself back or questioned why I am the way that I am. You know, maybe I am too blunt. Maybe I am. I have too many opinions. And it's like, yes, obviously there is a time and a place to share your opinions. But also, if you're coming from a good place and you're genuinely trying to help someone and they take it the wrong way, that's not on you. All you can do is communicate like what your intention was, where it was coming from. Hopefully that'll clarify any sort of conflict. But if they still don't understand, you can't control them understanding. You can't control them coming to terms with it. All you can do is communicate, you know, where you're coming from. So just wanted to share that because at the event that I attended was with Reese Witherspoon, There were a lot of women there that were living their truth, badasses, spreading kindness and positive energy out in the world, but also being their unapologetic selves. And I don't want to make this like a men versus women thing, but I do feel like sometimes, you know, men can say what they think unsolicited. But when a woman does that, it's like, she's a bitch. Or, you know, she's being too critical or she's critical. And this doesn't go for everything. This is obviously a generalization, but it just goes to show that, you know, part of me is also like, I'm going to be my unapologetic self and that needs to be okay. And if someone's not okay with it, that person needs to communicate that so that we can then, I can learn and we can come to this common ground. But the solution is not that I silence myself or I hold myself back and I'm not living my truth because that makes someone uncomfortable because I'm not being malicious. I am kind. And if there are things that I'm saying that maybe someone would rather not hear or they're offended by because I've made an observation or stood up for myself or stood up for someone else. Well, I mean, sorry, not sorry sometimes, you know, I just feel like we as women are very apologetic. And I just want to normalize women and all people really to feel like they can share their voice. And it's a safe space to do that. And it's not going to be reprimanded. Because I feel like that's also, you know, where this bystander culture can come from is people being afraid to even share their voice because of the consequences. So just a thought to noodle on. But as I end my rant, I am transitioning into another one, which is some of my takeaways from the Shine Away event that I attended in LA with my best friend. So first off, so many heavy hitter names, not to, you know, this is not bragging. This is just like fangirl moment but also very excited. So Reese Witherspoon, Hello Sunshine, you know, through the event, obviously there were other sponsors there like at t but Reese's team, you know, planned the event and it was amazing. Some of my speaker highlights were uh, Tracy Ellis Ross, love her and seeing her speak in the flesh just made me love her even more. She's just so herself that it is contagious and also her fashion sense is just unmatched and on point and I knew she would show up in a fit 
and she showed up in a fit and worked it and owned it and i loved every moment of it um reese with a spoon also spoke on a couple panels and she i just i knew like i like i knew i liked her from movies that i've watched and you know content content that i've consumed but seeing her speak in her element of like her company and her vision and just this whole event that she really you know helped inspire and and pull together i know it wasn't her she didn't do all the work but i mean it started with her let's be real um she's amazing and we vibe on lots of ways with her like crafting she loves to craft um so i am there with her and she just love i mean a she's also petite i'm petite um and like funny and witty you can just i, I just i love seeing women in their element and just being themselves especially these people that maybe you know sometimes you idolize or you just you don't even know that much about them but then seeing them come together and for the sake of empowering other women is so inspiring and really something to admire so reese was one of the women um that i loved hearing from Jennifer Garner was also there. She is funny and <laughs> definitely just like, I feel like is not afraid to, you know, take the mic and share some thoughts, even if it's like not directly responding to the question that was asked. And I love, I love that. Um, Mindy Kaling was also there. Amazing. I had no idea that she was a single mom and she decided to, you know, have her children on her own she's a mom of two and i find that really inspiring because actually before i even met marco i had had a conversation with my parents and this was during covid first wave covid covid really did a number on all of us the number it did on me was like wow i really need to find some balance and healthy boundaries with work and my personal life that was one of them. The second one was, okay, like I keep saying I'm trying to date, not really making lots of efforts on dating. What am I doing? I do want to have a family. Unfortunately, women have this thing, a biological clock. And I always knew that having a family was something that I wanted. And I really did give that a lot of thought when I was, you know, during COVID my parents have never really pressured me to have kids. I know some people's parents are like, when are you having kids? When are we going to be grandparents? My parents had me actually pretty young, so I don't know if that's part of it, but they have just never pressured me in that sense, So, which was nice because that was something that because I never felt pressured, maybe I just, you know, always was like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do and they'll get behind it <laughs> or not. We'll figure it out. But you know, it's still single and started to think to myself, well, what if I don't meet, you know, a, a, a guy like, am I going to not be a mom because I don't have the ideal partner? And also I didn't want to just like settle for the sake of settling because that's, you know, for me personally, that is, wasn't the solution. So I did a lot of soul searching and thinking and had come to the decision that, you know, if I were by the time I was in my 30s, if I hadn't met someone that I thought I could settle down with and and really someone that I, I could build a life with, that I would try to have a kid on me, like a baby on my own. And I talked to my parents about it and they were supportive. Um, not everyone understands your choices and that's okay. But at the end of the day, my parents were supportive and I appreciated that so much. Um, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't needed for me to move forward with this decision, but it was, it did give me some peace of mind that I would have that support because it does take a village to raise a family, even with, you know, mom and the dad traditional in the picture. And, you know, that was my plan B. It wasn't necessarily my plan A, but it was going to be my plan B because I didn't want to not fulfill this dream that I had because a man wasn't in the picture. So that being said, knowing that Mindy Keeling is a single mom and did it on her own, 
it takes a, a strong person to be able to do that and you know privileges and or not it just it does emotionally and I admire her for that so and she does so much I mean she's not just a mom you know she is a businesswoman she's a comedian she's just she does it all so that was very inspiring um Lindsay Vaughn was also there and Carrie Walsh Jennings they're Olympic medalists Lindsay was Olympic skier and Carrie Walsh Jennings was a volleyball player um, they both were trailblazers in their industries, so really inspiring to hear from them, especially now that they're entrepreneurs and have both retired from being athletes and are now helping other future athletes. So that is amazing to see them paying it forward for future generations. Um, Fortune Feimster, who is a comedian, she opened the event and was really funny and shared some of her like personal life stories. And I went on to spend the rest of my evening watching both of her stand ups with my best friend. Highly recommend. Super funny. Uh, if you're into comedy, or just even if you're not, give it a try. I feel like a lot of people would relate to her comedy. Allison Felix also Olympic medalist, runner. She was there on a panel. I mean, need I say more? Um, Lizzie Mathis, Radhi Devlukia, Hannah Bronfman, and Sophie Morgan were some of the other speakers that I was able to listen to on other panels. And I'll include all of these names in the show notes, but they all had different remarks and things that they shared that I really resonated with. So there were so many other women and speakers that were at the event. Um, But some of the names that I listed were just people that I really resonated with and was really inspired by. There were other women as well that, you know, I was inspired by, but just covering some of the panelists. And there were some performances as well that were uh, amazing. So Kieran and Nivy their duo I think they're sisters and according to my best friend they like went viral on TikTok but they were amazing and Dev Cameron as well she was really great just a day of inspiration and creativity and good vibes and badass women and I am so here for it so wanted to talk about that and also share some ways that I stay inspired and ways that you might be able to stay inspired if you're seeking ways to tap into your creativity or ways to, you know, maybe find your passion or just open to new perspectives. Um, So attending events for me that are focused on women empowerment or entrepreneurial or, you know, creativity is a way that I stay inspired. Um, There's also so many events out there so you know if you have different interests I would try to look into events that align with your interests or maybe people that you would be like willing to learn from or think are interesting maybe doing what you're doing there's so many events online and in person and there's so many free resources out there if you look for them I can't I tell Marco this all the time but I have found so many free courses and even like courses that are one week or or just things that are like an hour long or two hours long so many free resources out there so make sure you're using google google is your friend and if you're on social i mean i and now i'm at the point where i'm just getting targeted some things so i don't have to look as much but it did start with a lot of me like you know looking into things about manifesting or Being intentional with the content that I consume on social media has made it really easy for me to find these events now because instead of having to search for them as much, they are, which is, I guess, again, a bad thing. I'm targeted for them and sometimes I'm like, "Mm, maybe, and then sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. So as you're consuming content, try to be intentional with the types of content that you're consuming if that is something if you're interested in also a being targeted for the right content and 
just using social media to your advantage. There's so many creators out there and so much free knowledge out there. If you just look for it, like using hashtags, you know, hashtag life advice or Googling any of your interests, um, definitely somewhere to start and just pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. That is something that's easier said than done, but I am trying to push myself out of my comfort zone more. You know, uh, last month I talked about like doing something different. So I am trying to apply this doing something different to my day to day and pushing myself out of my comfort zone is the way that I'm doing something different. So for me, that's posting on social more, trying to share my positivity and encouragement like with anyone that's following me because I do want to put content out there that up, uplifts your day or at, it adds value because there's so much content already on social media and I'm here for like a meme and, some, and things that are mindless but for me my time is also precious so when I do share things I want them to feel intentional and I want to be putting content out there even if it's reshare, resharing content that is going to be something that I feel like is going to be inspiring um, and helpful or use, useful. So, and sometimes that's honestly a pretty picture that is aesthetically pleasing because we all need, we all need those now and then. Um, but just a thought to think about, which is pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, and also jumping like in on conversations, even if you're not directly involved, I actually practiced this at the event. I was standing in the lunch line with my best friend and there were two girls behind us chatting. I was kind of eavesdropping, but for a good cause because, you know, earlier that morning, Reese encouraged us all to meet new friends, talk to new people because we are in this environment with a lot of like-minded women so really to take advantage of that and I didn't want to just chicken out and do the easy thing which would have been just to keep to myself with my best friend um, I wanted to challenge myself because I have been learning this by doing recently that when I am pushing myself out of my comfort zone and challenging myself I'm learning new things about myself and it's scary to do it, but it's been so worth it and I haven't regretted it. So I jumped in on a conversation and introduced myself and ended up, you know, hitting it off with these two women and we shared contact information and socials and I was so inspired by both of them. Um, you know, one of them had quit her corporate job and moved to Costa Rica for three months the other one was going to school for creative writing and is in the midst of writing a memoir. And just hearing both of their stories really motivated me to continue on the journey that I'm on. And it was a blessing in disguise. And I'm so happy that I pushed myself out of my comfort zone because I got to connect with two really cool women, hear their stories, share my story. And all relate, you know, in different ways to each other and help inspire, you know, we, I feel like we inspired each other to continue on the journeys that we're on. And I think that's a beautiful thing that strangers can do that. And it's honestly just sharing kindness and being present in the moment is really what, what, what is needed. I feel like to be in the moment and really take something away so I'm here for pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and I encourage you to do it and you can do it in even little ways, you know, like having a conversation with the barista when you go to a coffee shop, just taking that extra moment to actually connect with someone. You'd be surprised what you can either learn about yourself or just, you know, having a moment where you connect with another human being, I feel like is so needed some nowadays and I work from home so I don't interact with people in person every day but I do interact with lots of people virtually and online so that is still like you know there's still opportunities to connect in many ways it doesn't need to be physical but I would definitely encourage you if you are in a physical place to embrace connecting with other people 
it can be uncomfortable, but you know, the more you do it, the easier it'll get. So, um, and on that note, listening and learning, lots of listening when attending, you know, this event, because I was listening to panels and speakers. But as I was listening, I was also realizing that asking for help, even, you know, when I might not want to ask for help, really, isn't a bad thing. And is necessary. I sometimes I feel like, you know, I have this desire to want to keep everything together and I do have most things together, but I am human and I'm not a robot and I don't know everything. I know a lot of things. I know I definitely know that, but there there are things when I'm out of my element sometimes and learning to ask for help and seek, you know, advice is something that I am practicing every day and want to encourage everyone that's listening to do because I feel like it can get, you know, that maybe it's, maybe it's an adult thing where we're like, you don't want to seem like you don't know, but normalizing the fact that you maybe don't know something should, you know, be something we, I feel like I'll just embrace because we're not robots and (laughs) We're all works in progress in our own ways. So if you don't know something, ask for help. Or if you're, you know, going through, I mean, for me, when I'm going through a hard time or I am having conflict and I am like, why, you know, what is going on? That is usually also a sign for me that I need to like really check in with myself and then also check in with those people in my corner that have lived life longer than me and definitely have knowledge to share. Um, Accepting that I don't know it all is something that I am working on every day, but it's something that I just want to encourage everyone to really think about because sometimes I feel like our pride can get in the way of our, of us living our ideal and best life because we don't want to seem weak or dumb or vulnerable and that may be a cultural thing you know every person's upbringing and culture is different but I just know personally like I've struggled with that in the past and and still do every now and then but I'm really trying to embrace the fact that I don't know everything and to lean on the people that are in my life because you know it takes a village and I offer my advice to people and talk to people about things too. And there are people in your corner that will hear you out and listen. And maybe, you know, not everyone's different. So I'm not going to say that everyone has a tribe there that they can lean on, but there are lots of resources out in the world. Um, so definitely take advantage of them and take advantage of your loved ones. Not in a, not in a bad way, take advantage, but lean on them if you need them. I, you know, you'd be surprised on how they might respond. So food for thought there. Um, I definitely, you know, I'm trying to lean into my vulnerability more and my open-mindedness of not being, jumping to a judgment of how someone might respond to me needing their help or me asking for their advice. Definitely easier said than done, but it's something I'm trying to practice, Um, especially tapping into my vulnerability. I saw a lot of and listened to a lot of women at this Shine Away event be very vulnerable and open with their life stories, things that they've struggled with. And, you know, all of it was part of their journey. And where they're at now is living their ideal and best life and sharing their learnings with other women that are trying to do the same. And I think that's empowering and motivating. And I commend them for being able to do that in front of strangers. I mean, can you imagine, you know, just like letting it all out there? Um, But it's for a good cause. And I I'm so appreciative that I got to soak all of that knowledge in and soak that vulnerability in. Um, the power of connecting, you know, with other people and 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 women, it's it's so. I mean, it's powerful. And from just that one event, 
you know, something that I really saw was that A, we all know women can do anything and we around the world, but truly we all have so much that we overcome in our lives and there are so many opportunities to connect with people and and really like extend an olive branch and help each other out and sometimes I think it's easy to just focus on ourselves and obviously we have to focus on ourselves to an extent but there the opportunity to pay it forward I think is a beautiful thing and that is something that a lot of these women did at this event I'm not naive to the fact that you know people do get paid to have speaking engagements but I think also you know there's the level of really like sharing and vulnerability is something that's a choice and I admire these women for for sharing and sharing their passions with everyone so that they can inspire other people to tap into their creativity and go after their dreams and passions. I think we need more of that in the world and that is why I cannot wait to attend Shine Away next year. I mean, a year from now, who knows what where the podcast will be and where I'll be. I'll definitely still be in California, but I am so excited to even think about a year from now. Um, definitely still staying present in the moment, but it's just exciting to think about. And something that really resonated with me from what I listened to was Tracy Ellis Ross and Reese Witherspoon. They had a convo together and Tracy shared some wisdom from how she interviews people, you know, when they're going to work at Pattern Beauty, which is her hair care company. And she talked about asking them what their superpower is, what how people would describe their superpower and what their dream job is. And I actually posted this on Instagram as a reel, so I can link to it in the show notes. Um, and you can actually see like the speech from her um, and get more context. But I really resonated with that. And superpower is something that came up in a couple different panels. As she shared this insight pro tip with us, I thought to myself, what is my superpower? And how would other people describe my superpower? And what is my dream job? And I I do answer this in the Instagram reel. So I'm not going to get too into it here. But just the idea of a superpower, I love. I don't know if it's because I'm a huge Avengers and Marvel fan or the fact that I just am. I joke with Marco that I'm a witch. I'm not. (laughs) I'm not, but, you know, a girl can dream that she has some powers. I mean, who who wouldn't want some superpowers? Let's be real. So I would. I would love some. Um, but I do have a superpower. And, you know, I, I think my superpower is my honesty um, because I, I, do, I am honest to a fault. I mean, growing up, I used to be the banker when I would play board games with my cousins because I was the most honest one and wouldn't cheat people out of money. I did have a slip up once. Um, I think I just wanted to test, you know, everyone because they just assumed they knew how I was going to be. But um, and I like, you know, I like to challenge people. But honesty is my superpower. And the way that people would describe my superpower, I think, would maybe be that I am opinionated, which is not a bad thing. And my dream job is to be a full-time entrepreneur who helps people tap into their creativity and passions and manifest your like their ideal lives. That is my dream job. I would love to spend, you know, have that be my job, which is to help other people discover their passion and creativity because a lot of it I recognize is how do you even get started to make time for yourself and your passion and creativity and what you know what is your passion and I have been through that journey so I understand it's not black and white but I'm going through that journey and the podcast is part of it and also you know me working on my digital course and 
I just really want to encourage everyone to go after their biggest dreams. Totally understand that it can seem daunting, impossible, exhausting, and, you know, so many other things that feel like there are too many obstacles in front of you to accomplish it. But I honestly feel like it's doable. It does take a lot of hard work. It takes active, intentional steps and habits. And it takes open-mindedness, willingness to grow and learn and try new things and push yourself out of your comfort zone. But at the end of the day, it means you're more fulfilled and you're really in tune with yourself because you are doing something that you love and are passionate about even if it's not your full-time job, you know, spending a little bit of time on your passion a day can be a game changer for how fulfilled you are in life. And that is something that I am very excited to talk about more as the rest of this year goes on and share more tips on manifesting and habit change. Um, That is a lot of what November episodes and content is going to be focused on, Um, you know, staying inspired, ways to overcome imposter syndrome, habit change, how to take steps towards that, what, you know, what inspired my manifesting journey, which I've spoken about on previous episodes, but really like um, sharing that story and setting goals for, you know, December and the holidays I did a manifesting exercise in the last episode, but I want to keep helping everyone as we end the year and go into the new year with um, how to set goals, if that's something that you are interested in doing, and how to, you know, like maintain momentum on your goals. And I'm totally aware that setting goals and habit change can feel maybe overwhelming when you first hear it and like another chore on your to-do list that's already long and extensive. But the purpose of talking about setting goals is not to scare you off or make you feel like you're not doing enough already. It's to inspire you to dream. Dream a little bit. Start with some dreams and to add some goals in your life that are really serving you, not, you know, your kids or your boyfriend or your job or your parents or your friends, but really serving you just to encourage and challenge you a bit to do that. Maybe it's, you know, we start with one and just to see where that takes you. I'm going to get into this more in November, but my manifesting journey has not been overnight and me Leaning into it also did not happen overnight, but the more I've focused on my manifesting journey and given it more time and energy, I've gotten so much back from it as well. Um, You know, that's like the law of attraction. You know, we put things out in the universe that we want and we hope that they come back to us, you know, but we have to be ready to receive them. And what, you know, that means is like, you know, you don't just say something out in the world and then wait for it to come find you. You have to be making active steps so that when that thing comes and finds you or is ready for you, you're ready to receive it. It's easier said than done, but it's doable. And I think that a lot of people that aren't used to manifesting, maybe, you know, overlook manifesting, but part of that is part of the manifesting journey. If I want to be more physically active and fit and healthy, but I'm not ever taking steps towards, you know, eating healthy or working out, well, it's going to be hard to get to that, you know, end goal and result. And if I am not intentional with my time and I don't make time to work out, you know, granted there are things in life that you have to do, but if something's really important to you, you know, usually we make time to do it. So if I'm never making time for working out, I'm using working out as an example because (laughs) that is currently on my to-do list. 
and it is something that I usually let fall to the wayside. Um, but it is something that's important to me. But if I don't make time for it, then how do I expect to, you know, get the results I want? They're not just going to magically happen. Um, it takes my own action and my me being intentional with my time and my energy. That takes a lot of discipline, but it's doable. And the result, it can be very rewarding. Like for me, you know, working out isn't to lose weight or it's more just to be healthy like on the inside and that's important to me so as we set goals in November I encourage you to think about goals that are important to you um, like really deep down inside personal to you so that way you also can hopefully prioritize them and know that the end result is going to be that much more rewarding because it's something that you've really like poured your heart into and they don't have to be lofty goals the sky's the limit it can be as small as eating more vegetables to you know going back to school or learning get, trying to push for a promotion or just sky's the limit it just needs to be personal to you that is going to be the only criteria. So start to noodle on some goals that you might want to achieve in December and the new year so that we can take active steps towards achieving them. And I will be working on goals with you. So you're not going to be doing it alone. I will be your accountability partner. We will be checking in and I hope that you're excited for November because I am so excited. There's so much to come and I've just been connecting with so many women lately. Um, I reconnected with someone from that I used to be friends with in middle school. She is a like full-time entrepreneur and it is amazing to see and it is amazing to see the journey of people you know she used to be a teacher she had her own preschool at one point then you know covid impacted that and she had to close it she went back to teaching she you know became a mom she's pregnant with her second baby now she's living her passion i mean it's just so inspiring to see so many people out there pushing themselves out of their comfort zone despite the obstacles that they encounter and living their best life and that is why i am so adamant and excited to keep sharing these inspirational stories with you and i can't wait for 2024 because there are actual interviews coming from other entrepreneurs that i know you're going to resonate with and have lots of great takeaways from so i am so appreciative that you have been listening so far and i love you all as we wrap up i wanted to share a teaser for next episode um something that really inspired me from the well, another thing that really inspired me from the event was one of the women, Sophie Morgan, who had gotten to a car accident when she was younger and became paralyzed from the waist down. And despite that, you know, she's overcome so much and has broken down a lot of glass ceilings in her life and continues to do that despite being, you know, disabled. I loved what she was talking about because it was normalizing representation of disabled people in media. That's, you know, her mission. And she has a company um, that is focused on representation in the media for, you know, especially people that are disabled. And and that also starts with casting people sometimes that are actually disabled and not just like casting someone that's not disabled or not perpetuating tro like tropes and stereotypes of disabled people because that can be harmful and hurtful. And that's something that, you know, I've experienced because I have narcolepsy. And it's something that I don't talk about all of the time because, you know, it's something that I live with on a day-to-day -day basis, but it doesn't define me. But, I mean, I've seen 
in the media representation of narcoleptics, you know, and I've asked had people ask me, like, do you just fall asleep on the top of a dime? Like just all of these things because they see in media what they think narcolepsy is like, but they don't really know because unfortunately people don't take the time to actually Google things. They just take media as fact sometimes. And that doesn't, you know, I'm not trying to like shame those people. It is what it is. But it was so inspiring to see someone, and lots of people are doing this, but just, you know, from this event, see someone that also took this tragic event and has made a beautiful thing and then also is, you know, helping normalize representation of disabled people within the media. It's something that's so important and and it's something that I want to do my part in as well because... The invisible disabilities are also sometimes the ones that are like so hard to juggle with because there's not always a normal time and place to be like, by the way, I'm narcoleptic. And also, it isn't something that, you know, I want to define me. It isn't something that I feel like needs to be disclosed because, you know, why would someone need to know that? Unless, I mean, granted, there's a time and a place, but it is something that I want to share more about because... I have had to overcome a lot in my journey being a narcoleptic and I got narcolepsy when I was 13. It's, you know, an autoimmune disease. It's not hereditary. It's not genetic and it's not that common, but I want to share my story because I hope that it will inspire the people if you are also dealing with any, you know, invisible disabilities or lifelong disabilities that you can't control and you have to live with and I feel like having gone through this it has made me stronger and resilient and determined to go after my dreams and goals because I've already had to overcome a lot just to you know get where I'm at part of that is what drives me and I know anything is possible if you just are willing to put the work in and positive mindset definitely helps but just want to leave you with that thought thank you so much for listening i love you all i can't wait to be back next week i hope you have a wonderful week go and spread some kindness bye Music and editing done by Marco. You can find him at midnight, M-I-D-N-I-T-E underscore mind eight zero on Instagram for more of his work.